Two years ago, if we would have gotten a call for twin girls, there was no way. Then we got a call. She was uh, stated to us as a three-month-old child that had been in the NICU her whole life. Um, she was actually, uh, she had two collapsed lungs and no heartbeat, so beyond distress. I mean, she was gone. And so she was revived, and I just believe that's a miracle. A lot of them told me stories of, yeah, we thought one night she wasn't going to pull through, so we all stayed late because we wanted to be there, and it's crazy. But she medically should have been stable. And so what they were saying is she needs an emotional attachment. She needs a reason to thrive. She was failure to thrive, but medically they couldn't explain why she was failure to thrive, which is crazy to me that a child at that age can, can know I need someone. And so um, she had been losing weight for months. She, had, she would gain a little bit, lose it, gain a little bit, lose it. And over the three days that I visited her, we ended up, the last 24 hours, we roomed in together in the hospital room and she gained a pound over three days, which was astronomical. And I believe it didn't matter that it was me. It didn't matter who it was. She needed a person to say, you are worth it. I am here, let's do this. And she has been thriving since then. We've hit bumps in the road, but she just, I, I firmly believe in her situation medically, she wasn't, she wasn't failing because of a medical need. She was failing because of an emotional need. It was five days later, we brought her home on a Saturday. And on a Wednesday, we got a call that they found the twin. And we were like, they found the twin? What do you mean? And we found out that she had been discharged earlier. She was healthier than Annabella at birth. So she had been discharged from the NICU earlier and through a sequence of events with a sibling, CPS had found this twin in another area of the state and realized that she had a sibling that was a twin sister. And so they called us and said, would you take the twin? My husband's in New York. And so I called him and I was like, I said, there's a twin, would we, could we do it? And he's like, well, absolutely. The reality is, is that somebody else may have said yes to that same call, um, but where's the next baby in the NICU? There's always another baby that will be abandoned uh, or be available for placement. Um, that somebody has to say yes to. Um, whether that's us, whether that's somebody else, somebody needs to say, be saying yes to these babies. We get to take care of some sweet babies uh, who have come from a hard situation and we get to kind of restore uh, and be kind of God's redemptive hand on just a small aspect of their lives. So they don't know where they've come from. All they know is that they're being loved and, and we get to be kind of the hands of of Jesus in those moments. We will be, by the time um, kind of end of November rolls around, we will have adopted these two girls and they will forever be a part of our family. I always tell people we never thought we would foster. It, never thought we would adopt. I thought it was a really scary idea. And so I understand all of those feelings. I have never seen so much proof of what I believe and so much proof of my faith and who my God will be in the valley until I fostered. And so that was my biggest fear. My biggest fear was the goodbye. That's a lot of people's biggest fear is what if they leave? And we lived through that and God taught me so clearly, I am not only enough, but I will fill you with more joy than you would have ever experienced if you had chosen your comfort. But it does call you out of your comfort zone and I thought that was a bad thing, but it's the best thing that's ever happened to us.